All right, so just last week, I made this video here all about the new announcements made by the BC government about their intentions and introductions of new protections for real estate buyers here in the province of BC. Now we are in an absolutely terrible spot because 50% of the time I am working for my buyer who is having trouble getting into the market. And the other 50% of the time, I am working for my seller who is trying to get the most amount of money for their home. And I have a fiduciary duty to my clients to put their needs above my own. But the market has been very, very hot and the government can't really control that due to things like interest rates and supply shortages. And the provincial government has been put in a spot where they absolutely, no matter what they do, can not win but they have to look like they're doing something because if they don't they're going to get voted out and lose their jobs so they have brought in these new consumer protections and i've had about a week or two here to cool off and think about them further and i just don't see how these consumer protections are actually going to protect consumers what they will do is make more bad actors and i'm going to elaborate on that in this video but before i do please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you would like to stay up to date on the market specifically my market here of surrey bc and please make sure to hit the like button see you hitting the like button is the best way for me to get this information out to more people that is exactly what this channel is about. It's not about Steve talking too much. But that sure happens a lot. Yeah, I know. But it is about trying to get out real estate information from a professional's point of view. Some professional. Man. From a licensed professional's point of view. So you can better make decisions for you. See, education is power. And getting that information out to more people lets them make the right decision for them. And in my opinion, I think the government is actually going to implement things that take away your ability to make better choices for yourself. And of course, if you have questions about the market and you would like to ask someone, you can book a call with me right down below in the description at a time that works best for you. And also while you're down there in the description, you can download our informed buyer's guide so you can make better choices for yourself, like maybe reading some good information rather than watching this channel. Okay, but seriously now, let's take a look at the website of the BC FSA and the fact that they are bringing in these new home buyer protections. I'm going to try not to talk too much about the cooling off period that they are talking about bringing in, but I am going to for sure touch on it. So they are talking about a cooling off period, which means a standardized condition removal period where the, let's call it the buyer in any given transaction can walk away at any given time after they have an accepted offer. But uh, on top of that, they are also thinking about removing some things or adding to, I guess you would call it, into the BC real estate business. One is all about what they have dubbed as blind bidding. We call it the offer process. Um, the government has picked a word and that's why they put it in these beautiful quotations here, blind bidding. Uh, it's, it, it's a shock word, but basically given what goes on in the real estate market, you do not uh, have the ability to see anyone else's offer. They are actually proposing that you as the buyer have the right to see the other buyer's offers on the property, which you think will be a good thing. I think the blind bidding process that they brought in was put in actually to not to stop the creation of an auction scenario. Again, another topic that I've covered, you can get into it here in this video if you like. Now, in theory, uh, this may work. I personally don't think it will, just specifically because I've been to auctions before and I know that I usually, when I attend any sort of a, say a charity auction, emotions get growing and, and prices get bid up. Now the next thing they want to bring in is some way to deal with what they're calling price baiting. I love these terms how they're all put in in quotation marks. Um, 
what is price baiting? Price baiting is un intentionally underpricing a property. It is a legitimate problem. I'm not sure how they fix it. Let's see what they say here. Uh, artificially low listing prices. So they're identifying the problem. They're not identifying the solution. I do think that this is a problem. I don't know how you fix it. I don't think you can make it illegal for someone to accept over their asking price. That would fix the problem. It would also make prices or house prices, uh, asking prices anyway, much, much higher. But um, I don't think you can fix this problem from any way that I can see right now anyway. It's a massive problem. The problem is this. If I list, if I know my property is going to sell for, let's say, $600,000, it's a very wise marketing strategy to list that property for $599.9, which is, you know, slightly less, and then it get a bunch of interest on that property, hopefully drive multiple offers, and then me as the seller, I will benefit from a buyer who offers the highest price. Now, the problem in the industry is there are people that think they're going to sell for $600,000. They are putting their price at $499.9. And then if people offer $590, they're not willing to accept it. Uh, sometimes they're offering $650 after that. They're not willing to accept it. So that is the problem in the industry. I'm going to go on record here and say absolutely a big issue and should be fixed. What is the correct way to do it? I'm not really sure. And the next thing they want to do is they want to look at the risks uh, buyers associate with unconditional offers. So in other words, they want to possibly even mandate home inspections. Now, in theory, again, that's great. I personally don't want to buy a property without a home inspection. Uh, I could see issues with this and the issues are not necessarily maybe what you would think. The issues with mandating a home inspection is it brings in a cost that a buyer may not want to take on, right? If you don't want to spend five, six, seven hundred dollars on your inspection, you should have the right to waive it. I can't see them making you do it, but I could see them within that rescission period that they've announced saying you have the opportunity. Um, it does create work for home inspectors. I know a lot of good home inspectors out there and they do a great job. So it's not really the worst. And they could possibly mandate someone like me to have to pay for a home inspection on my listing in advance. The only problem with that is that opens up my seller to liability. Then I have a fiduciary to not put liability on my client. So now I'm breaching my fiduciary duty. So anyway, all sorts of issues here. But the number one issue that I have seen that is arising out of all of this is if they, which I assume they will, uh, eliminate blind bidding so that we're going to go to an auction system. They're also going to introduce a cooling off period, which means a right of rescission. So here is what is going to happen. You are going to go to a property. You will be able to bid openly against that property against someone else. Now you have to be the highest price because you can't waive your conditions. So you can only, only the highest price will take the offer. You do that and now you have gone to an auction and not only when the gavel goes down and say sold, you now have seven days to change your mind and walk away from the property, which you think as a buyer is a fantastic thing. Here's what will happen though. You're going to have buyers in a, specifically in a hot market like this. They will go to that property they will offer on that property. They'll beat everybody else there, but the market is going up. And right now the market's going up something like $10,000 a week or more. They will now take that period of time to shop their contract or what the government has already tried to eliminate and done a terrible job of, shadow flipping. They are now been essentially given a seven, let's call it seven days. Some people think it's going to be three days. Some people think it's going to be 10. I assume it's going to be probably about seven days. They are going to be given a period of time of which with no consequence, if they walk away from the contract, they will be able to shadow flip that contract to somebody else. Now, you may say, well, there is uh, things in the contract written to say they can't shadow flip. I'm going to tell you, Almost every contract that's being written in BC right now that is being crossed out quite regularly, all of that, because they can't mandate a seller 
to say that that is the case. They can't undo contract law. So that often always comes out. And a lot of these guys that are doing this sort of thing are doing it for cash on the side. They don't want any sort of record of this being uh, going through, you know, seeing the CRA so they have to pay income tax on it. They don't want any of that stuff. A lot of these guys are doing it uh, under the table. And if these proposals go ahead, the BC government is going to make essentially an open auction of which the buyer may walk away or flip the contract in that redemption period. So shadow flipping is about to get a whole lot worse. As I said, there is no way the BC government can't do something because house prices are so crazy. However, this is also not the solution. This is going to damage more people than they are proposing it will protect. Jeez, Steve, lighten it up a little bit. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't help it. I'm, I'm passionate about it, and I think it's very poorly thought out. Now, do I have a better solution? I don't think I do. Well, no, I do. Increase interest rates. That's all it is. Increase interest rates, the market will come down. Problem is, your payment won't go down. Anyway, I'm very interested to see what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what it is you think. Try and keep it positive, guys. I know there's going to be a whole bunch of down there, but I just don't really care about that stuff. It's all fluff. Constructive talk. Let's put it down in the comments. See what solutions could possibly be out there to fix the crazy house price problem that we have here and well across the whole world thanks so much for watching please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to book a call with me go ahead and do so right now down below in the description make sure you hit the like button before you go check out this video here and we'll see you in a couple of days